Ali Drew for seconds out, joined by Anthony Yard, who has had his mini press conference today. Your opponent wasn't there, but how are you feeling now you're in fight week? No, I feel good. I feel good. I know the opponent's here, but he's, he wasn't at the press conference for whatever reason. I don't know. Yeah, what reason do you think that was? I think they were expecting him to be there, but he, he didn't show up. I actually don't even know. I know he's meant to be there. I don't know if he speaks any English. I don't know. Just waiting for fight night. How much do you know about your opponent? And have you, have you sort of, I guess, you or your team studied him? Um, all I know about him is, again, he's a southpaw. That's important. Um, he's got a good knockout ratio. He's got 50 knockouts on his record. Um, I think he's got over 20 wins, but he's only lost five. So he's someone not to take lightly. I don't take no opponent lightly anyway, but yeah, someone to, uh, I need to stay sharp on. And he's quite, a, as you say, his record, he's quite a tough opponent to be having a comeback fight for. It Was that intentional from you? You wanted a tough opponent? For me, I just fight whoever's put in front of me. I've always been at the, um, even in like the early stages from, from my first pro fight, I've never got involved in who I'm fighting. The way I see it is, if I've got goals and aspirations to be a world champion, it don't matter who I fight in between. I just got to be ready for whoever they put in front of me. And obviously now back in the ring from, from that defeat, how much have you sort of evaluated from that performance? Now you've had some time out of the ring, you're going to be performing again on Saturday. What have you sort of learnt from that? I've evaluated a lot. Um, for me, it was where my mind was at more than anything. Um, the decisions I was making and um, yeah, just my mentality going into that fight and my mentality when I was in the ring as well. Um, that would be corrected. <laughs> Do you feel like you yourself has made the changes? You've also added some members to your team. I think you've changed your team a bit. Um, is that just all through evaluating that loss? Um, it's been it's been coming to be honest. Um, advice in the corner. Um, certain things I'm doing, the decisions I'm making, whilst I'm fighting. But um, we we introduced James Cook into the camp. And he's just literally slotted in like he was meant to be there. Um, I've known him for a long time as well. And again, we've got the same kind of mentality when it comes to helping out the children. Even he couldn't be here today because he's still got obligations in terms of he works with the community in Hackney. And that's where I was born, um, dealing with young kids. And that's something I do every day as well. So I said, cool, he can come up on the, um, Friday. And then, yeah, all the work's been done then. It's only the advice we get in the corner. And you were meant to fight um, before, but you had to pull out because I think of a tooth problem. Um, do you feel like you're back to complete health now? Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, anyone that's had a, a bad toothache, abscess toothache, it's when your tooth gets infected, etc. So I had an extraction. It's not a joke. <laughs> I get, I've been punching my face a lot of times and there's no pain that, that hits like a toothache. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, I've had wisdom teeth out, which was horrific. So my, my mom said, yeah, my mom's had three, four children. And she said that an abscess toothache is twice the pain. Did, did she say that? 100%. <laughs> and my, my, my younger sister as well, she said the same thing. Like, when you get a, there's toothaches and there's bad toothaches. There's nothing like it. Like toothache, I've seen grown men cry. I won't name no names. <laughs> <laughs> I will not name the names, but I've seen grown men cry over toothaches. But you, you're all good, 100% again? Back to business, yeah. Back to business. From the tooth, you get to take, um, they give you antibiotics. I had to take them. Usually I'm like, no, it's health, uh, natural. Took the antibiotics and then they took out the tooth. So since then, I've been good. So Saturday night, what are you wanting to see from yourself? You know, it, obviously you want the win, but what is it that you want to see? Um, the explosiveness again. The, the brave, ferocious... Anthony Yard, that's why they called me the beast from the east. Um, I know what was wrong. I know what was wrong. I shouldn't have even in a... I say I should have, but close family and friends have told me I shouldn't have been in the ring um, from the year that I had. My mum wasn't there. Um, I'm not a person that makes excuses, so I'll say that's the past. Um, and a, a trooper, a true professional can perform in any circumstances. So I always have that mentality. So, But I'm happy, I'm happy to be back. And I'm happy for... The main thing for me is having fans back because I feel that plays a big part as well. Yeah, the fact that, you know, you have fought behind closed doors and now it's full capacity crowd, you know, do you think that makes a difference to your performance? Some fighters, I guess, are affected by it, others aren't. Absolutely. I had to use um, Josh Warrington as an example because he's someone, when he's, when he's doing his ring walk here, 
he's having a fight already. <laughs> Going towards the ring, he's punching the air, he's screaming at the crowd, the crowd's screaming at him. He's building up his adrenaline. So when he starts the fight, when he fought Lee Selby, he charged at Lee Selby. He's, it's, a, it's a different, and then when he fought the Mexican guy he fought recently, he started slow, he was flat. Um, and I could, I could relate to, to how he fought, because I fought Dex Bowman. Um, when it was behind closed doors and I was like, that was weird. That's the first thing I said, that was so weird. Even the ring wall, everything was just weird. Um, but I'm one of the people I'm entertain. I'm a, I'm a crowd pleaser. That's why I always go for the knockout if I can. Um, but I'm just happy to have it back to normal. And providing all goes well on Saturday night, you're then looking ahead to the rematch with Lyndon Arthur with saying the 9th of October, I think it's, it's been sort of penciled in or, or sealed for. Um, what is is it you're looking for different in this rematch? Um, just to be more focused, to be more aware. Because that for me, it's like, when I watched back that fight, it's so frustrating for me because whilst I was in there, I felt so comfortable. Um, when I watched it back, I was like, what is this? Like, what, what, what am I watching? I still thought, again, um, everyone's got their perceptions of how they think the fight went. Um, I still feel like if, if there was a winner of the fight, it was me. But... I can clearly see from watching it back why people thought he won and why it was so close in the scorecards. Um, so it's one of them frustrating ones where I'm like, I could have just, I could have stepped it up at any time I wanted to. Um, I went to do it in the, in the last round. For me, it was being cautious. I feel like I'm winning the fight. Don't take no unnecessary risk. All the stuff that you hear boxers say all the time. But um, when I watched it back, there was an urgency. Um, I was losing rounds, etc. But whilst I was in there, I just felt comfortable. But that's what I've learned most of it, um, most of all from it, is that um, each round is domination. There's no tight rounds, there's no... I'm just back, put it that way. Did you, straight after that fight, were you wanting the rematch straight away? Immediate effect. You know when they say instant coffee? You know there's no procedure to go through the machine? <laughs> I wanted it immediately, but um, there's things happening in the background, which I can respect, it's a business. Um, and there's ways that things get done, so I just got to be patient. As long as it's happening, I'm good. I don't really care on time frames or anything like that, so it's happening. And do you feel like this time you m won't want it to go to the scorecards? Absolutely not. Even in the first fight, um, I had no intentions. I have no intentions of any of my fights going to the scorecards because um, I'm entertaining and I believe the fans always want to see a knockout. They want to see an end to a fight. Um, but when you're in there, you know, the f it goes a certain type of way. And I just thought, I'm winning. Don't take no unnecessary risk. That's how I felt when I was in there. Going back and watching it, I was like, yeah, it was closer than I thought. Um, and then I put myself in a situation where it was down to the judges and everyone has different perceptions. No one's wrong, no one's right. It's just how someone views the fight. And that's just boxing. There's fights before where I'm like, this guy won. And I'm sitting next to somebody. We're watching the TV, same angle, same everything. And he's saying, no, he won. And then we're debating on, it's just opinions, isn't it? So that's how boxing is. That's why it's such a beautiful sport. Well, just talking about this sort of light heavyweight division domestically, and um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, who's the best across the board. Um, you know, L you and Lyndon Arthur are always mentioned. Callum Johnson's now back in the mix. Um, Boatsy fought the other night. What did you make of, of his fight and also the division as a whole? Um, the division as a whole is thriving. It's popping, um, so I'm excited about that. Um, I didn't get to watch Boatsy's fight, but again, I heard he got a good result. He got another knockout victory, so I'm happy for him. Just like even with Lennon Offer, even though it was at my at my expense, I'm always happy to see people um, prosper in life and, and elevate. So I even sent him a message after that everything is settled. I sent him a message saying congratulations. He messaged me when I lost the family members during COVID, so I just messaged him saying congratulations, like. No one knows what anyone's been through. I didn't say what I just said congratulations, like enjoy enjoy the moment or whatever. But no one knows what anyone's upbringing, what they've been through and um, what they need at the time. So I was very, very happy for him, but I'm not focused on any rematch now come fighting Saturday. But um, my time will come back. And Callum Johnson obviously being in the same stable with Frank Warren, is that a fight you'd be interested in? I'm interested in all these fights. <laughs> all these fights, as long as it's a... Um, it's a step towards the progressive stages of my career. Um, I'm interested in all these facts. Um, there was a lot of, oh, Anthony's not fighting nobody. He's ducking this person. Not really, you know, the ducking talk, but it was like, he ain't fighting nobody. Then I went out to Russia, and everyone was like, oh, he's fighting, he's going to Russia, what? Like, we can't believe it. Um, 
I'm just one of them people, I just fight anybody. I'm in the sport of boxing and eventually you're going to have to fight people anyway. You're a world champion, you're going to get all these hungry young dogs coming up fighting you. So it's just about staying focused and getting the job done. Well, best of luck for Saturday. Look forward to seeing you back in the ring and for that rematch. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Saturday.